Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Norberto Garcia. I live in Argentina. I am currently the president of the Scientific Commission of Economy of Apimondia, and I am professor of a beekeeping uh, sector in a university in Argentina. I have other positions, but um, I think these are the main ones. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this important Congress to invite me and being able to share this time with you. I will try to describe you some recent uh, topics of the international market, especially related to honey fraud. So I will share my screen so we can share some slides. First of all, we will dedicate some slides to the global honey market. What's happening about the offer and demand of honey around the world? This is a chart that compares some topics between 2001 and 2019, the last 20 years. The population of the world has increased 24%. And honey production has increased 49%. Oh, that looks well for the sector. But if you look at the red bar, honey imports, an estimation of honey demand has increased 104%. So this difference between honey production and honey imports reflects some sort of balance. In some way, the world cannot produce all the honey that is currently demanded. Of course, young people, people that are more careful in their health, try to, produce, to consume more and more natural products. And people, the general public, has increasing awareness of the benefits of honey and the importance of bees in the maintenance of our environments. But this balance brings a problem. How is this gap filled? Probably we will conclude that honey adulteration has been filling that gap, but unfairly, of course. This chart shows values in metric tons and the evolution of the last 10 years in blue of global honey imports. You can also see the equation here and the slope of the equation tells us that the demand of honey has increased 23,000 tons every year. So every year, the world demands 23,000 tons more, which is absolutely difficult to meet such a big increase in the demand. The green line shows the exports from the 10, the 10 main honey export countries from the Americas. As you may know, the Americas are traditionally honey exporters of pure honey. But due to, the, due to the increase of agriculture and other issues, it is absolutely difficult to increase honey production. So the green line reflects what you may be feeling as beekeepers also in South Africa. But in contrast, in the red line, you can see the evolution of the exports of the 10 main Eastern countries. I say Eastern because I refer to Asia, and in this case, including Ukraine, another important honey exporter, especially during the last years. So these countries have been offering each year 15,000 tons every year. So every year, this region offers 15,000 tons of honey more, which is absolutely amazing. I 
as I've published in some articles in the American Bee Journal or in, the, in Bee World, or more recently in a chapter published by Elsevier, honey fraud is the only reason that we can find to explain those huge capacities of honey exports. Because indeed, if we check the number of colonies of each country, the production capacities have not been able to increase in such a way to explain those increased exports. During the last years, new methods, new, new modes of adulteration have been developed and they are every year more sophisticated. It is indeed in some sort, some sort of industrial product and we, the beekeepers, cannot compete with this artisan production of honey with an industrial production. So, first of all, that adulterated honey filled gaps, but then they have no roof. So they continued increasing. And we've arrived to a paradox around 2018 and 2019 that the offer of that honey from those countries was so, so huge that real honey was not demanded. So the paradox is a product that is increasingly demanded and is every year more difficult to produce it seems that nobody uh, needed that. So that caused a big de decrease in the honey prices around the world. In this chart, I'm showing the average price, unit price of expressed in dollars per metric ton of the 10 main American honey exporters. As you can see, during the period that starts around 2005 until 2015, those 10 years, the price increased because the production could not meet the demand. But the increase of fake honey in the international market made the prices decrease because the demand also decreased. So, during the first 10 years of this period, honey prices increased an, at an average of $209 per ton per year. So every year, $200 more. But then with this flood of adulterated honey, the price started to decrease, to decrease at the same rate at around $200 less per ton per year. And this, provoked the collapse of many beekeeping op operations around the world. As I mentioned, we started this work trying to combat honey fraud some years ago, and some of the results were more than evident after Apimondia Congress in Montreal in 2019. Fortunately, we seem to have started a stage of price recoveries. I will now tell you in next slides what sort of work we've been doing. But before addressing that, and I normally prepare a couple of slides of the host country in order, I'm not a specialist of course of the South African honey market, but just I would like to share you the big picture, the available statistics. This chart shows your particular situation regarding imports and exports. As you can see, it's a chart expressed in tons and shows the evolution of the exports from South Africa of honey during the last 10 years. As you can see, they are more or less stabilized. 
but look at the importations of honey to South Africa, represented in red. In 10 years, you tripled the honey imported. But where from? Mainly from China. For this, these, um, this uh, chart shows you the importations of South Africa during 2020. So the main honey exporter to Africa is China, followed by Zambia, then Poland, Romania, and Uruguay in a minor proportion. Another interesting chart is the price, the unit price of, uh, the, of each of those origins. This chart is expressed in US dollars per ton. Your main exporter is exporting at a little more than $1,000 per ton. The other exporters are in the range of the average range of the international honey market. In this case, Uruguay is a little low, but I do know that Uruguayan price prices have recovered. So these are in the range. But the big majority of your importations come from China at a very, very low price. Evidently, these huge importations of honey at so low price discourages beekeeping in your country. You have to compete with this honey and these and this price. So your situation is particularly worrying or interesting, but it's quite clear what is your situation. If you want to promote beekeeping in your country, not just to provide your honey, but just to provide other products of the beehive and to maintain the pollination of your crops, and your biodiversity, you need bees in your country. And the way to, 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 to promote beekeeping is to protect the price of honey of your country. And you will never protect that if you have to compete with so low imported honeys, low priced imported honeys. Well, this is what I can show you about uh, some statistics from honey imports and exports in South Africa. South Africa. Now, let's go to honey fraud. It's important to understand what is honey fraud, what is honey and what is not honey, and who determines what is honey and what is not honey. In order to understand the different types of honey fraud that we will later describe, we have to go back to the A. And the A, the dictionary in this case, is the definition of honey. In the definition of honey, you can find what is honey and what is not, and what can be done and what cannot be done. This definition is the most widely accepted and it's the definition by Codex. As you know, Codex is a voluntary standard released by the FAO. Let's look at it. It says that honey is the natural substance produced by honey bees. I highlight it in red, by honey bees. There's no other participation here. Humans cannot participate in the production of honey. I mean, they can collect that honey, but the production per se has to be done by the bees, only by the bees. So if your honey is partly made by the bees, and finished 
by human intervention, intervention, that's not honey, by definition. From the nectar of plants or from secretions of the living parts, that's the honey. So these are the only natural sources. If your bees are fed with syrup, although they transform that syrup, that's not honey because feeding is not a source for honey. The only two sources are nectar and the secretions of the living parts of plants of sucking insects, that's the honey. The importance of this is that the process of transformation of nectar into honey can only be done by the bees. Once the bees consider that that honey is ripe, they cap the cells and they finish their work. Then the humans come, come to the scene and say, well, I will extract it, I will pack it, I will filter it, or I will add chocolate, if that is included in the label, of, of course. But in that case, humans are participating in honey manufacture, but it's not honey production. Honey production, the transformation of nectar into honey can only be performed by bees. In that, process of mature, maturation of honey, the bees store the immature product, they retake it, they share it with other bees, redeposit that and store and leave in the combs to ripen and mature. While this process takes place, the bees add enzymes and substances of their own. So that makes honey a very complex in compositional terms. And more than 200 substances take part of honey. If we interrupt the process, if we speed the process, honey is not the complex substance it should be, but it's just a more simple substance, a simple food like would be nectar. That's not honey. Honey is the interaction between the plant and the animal kingdoms. Another point that Codex Alimentarius standards reflects is that no additions can be made to honey. You can only blend honey to honey. If you prepare a blend between pure honey and fake honey, the result is not honey. So that gives you a magnitude of the problem of honey adulteration. It's not only the fake honey that participates of the market, but all the blends that contain that adulterated honey, which shouldn't, which cannot, be labeled as honey. The other important point of codex says that no pollen or other constituents particular to honey may be removed, including water. Because water is a constituent particular to honey. Okay. If we keep in mind the different the definitions, we can start. Detecting, detecting the different types of honey fraud. The first of them is the dilution with syrups. It's the most widely known way of honey adulteration, but it's not the only one. This particular type of honey fraud has become more and more sophisticated since new syrups have been developed to cheat the current testing programs. So every time a new test comes in use, new syrups are prepared, developed to cheat, to pass those tests. So it's a very dynamic competition between the development of new tests and the development of new syrups. 
The second type of honey fraud is the production of immature honey. During the last years in many countries, new, new, new producers, they found that by harvesting the unripe product every day, they can increase the production because the bees do not have to add substances. They do not have to dehumidify de the product. So they can become foragers at an earlier stage of their lives. That product, which is harvested, immature, every one day, every day or every two days, then has to go to the factories that dry that product to make it more stable and to avoid fermentation. But indeed that product has not all the substances that the bees can produce by the different interactions in the immature process. So all honey, according to the most uh, um, recently discussed um, um, concepts of the main specialists around the world that honey should not be called honey. That is not honey by definition because there is a human intervention in the transformation of nectar of honey that is not included, is not accepted in the definition of honey. Then there is another method that has been recently developed is the use of iron extract resins to remove or reduce residues and lighten the color of honey. And this is not allowed because as I said, it is not allowed to remove the constituents particular to honey. And these filtrations not only removes the color, removes many important or residues, many particular constituents of honey. So the result, the product, the final product cannot be labeled as honey. The fourth type of honey fraud is masking of mislabeling the geographic or botanical origin of honey. There may, there may be big economic profits by saying, for example, this is acacia honey when it is a polyflora honey. It is honey, but the consumer has been cheated. Example, you cannot label as olive oil when it is corn oil, for example. It is oil, but the consumer has been cheated. And the last way I include here of honey fraud is the artificial feeding of bees during a honey flow. You can use internal or external feeders, but if you remember the definition of honey, artificial feeding is not a source for honey. So these foreign sugars can now be detected in honey. And although the bees process that, there are markers there that can, can lead the laboratories to interpret that this is not a legal source of honey and they are foreign sugars. Of course, the beekeepers can feed their bee. That's a normal beekeeping practice to feed their bees, but they have to be very careful when a new nectar flow is coming to stop um, bee feeding in order to avoid the, 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 the contamination of honey with these foreign sugars. How can we combat this problem? The first point is awareness. Awareness of beekeepers, this is what we are doing today. But also awareness of authorities that may be hearing these type of um, presentations and other articles, written articles in beekeeping journals or other journals, and also awareness of consumers. It's, it's the point when the beekeepers go to the general public, to the consumers and tell them that there is pure honey and there's a product that is not honey. And this is absolutely important because the consumers deserve protection. Once we create awareness and the authorities have a responsibility in enforcement, the rules and laws in order to avoid um, 
um, um, cheat to the consumers. But for authorities to be able to enforce, they have to be based on standards. They have to have that clear, what is honey and what is not honey. So in this case, the international standards uh, codex or also the European resolution. They are very good standards in the definition of honey, the composition of honey, but they were written, they were prepared many years ago. In the case of codex, it was initially released 40 years ago. So the methods used on those years to adulterate honey have changed. So testing has to change because if you continue testing in the same way you did 40 years ago, there are new modes of honey fraud that have been developed that will not be detected. There will be false negatives in many cases. So there are current efforts, as we will see later in Apimondia, to define what is honey, what is not, what can be done and what cannot be done at the beekeeper's level. And recently, the US pharmacopoeia has been working hardly in the preparation of an international, international standard for honey. It's an, an, an identity standard for honey, but with an international scope. And then, of course, it's important the beekeepers to talk and collaborate with authority, authorities to update local regulations. After this, after we are aware of the problem and we can definitely say what is honey and what is not, we have to mitigate, to try to reduce the risk of honey fraud. How can we do that? By testing. By checking the supply chain, where are you sourcing your honey? By checking the traceability, is that honey sourced as declared? or is coming through a third country or third region or whatever. And then adding the capacity of testing, you have to audit the whole honey chain. And by using one, two or three or the four of these strategies, you will mitigate, you will reduce the prevalence of honey fraud in your market. And then while there is complete awareness, the standards are clear and we have been working in the mitigation plans, may come legal actions. Maybe enforcement by authorities or maybe powered by beekeepers or by consumers. And this is the whole spectrum. And sometimes we have to work in the four strategies with the four big tools to have an efficient combat against candy fraud. We've been doing this for years and we arrived in this awareness by giving hundreds of presentations and writing articles all over the world, not only be keeping journals, but articles in the massive journals that go to the general consumers those that make the difference. Because if not, we are speaking always within beekeepers and we have to go beyond. We have to go and we have gone to the consumer. So currently there's a big uh, awareness of the general consumers, of, for example, in this COVID pandemic, that it is important if they want to consume natural products that may contribute to human health that those products have to be pure, because if not, the fake product that does not have the properties, for example, for human health, as the natural product. Regarding regulations, it's absolutely important that you work locally in your country, your region, and your continent to ensure that the regulations are updated. Sometimes it's true, as normally honey fraud is not related to food safety, it is not considered a problem, an, ur an, ur an, an urgent problem. 
authorities give no priority to this, but it's the beekeepers, we that have to push authorities to say, well, remember that it's not only honey, it's bees, and bees are absolutely necessary to pollinate our crops, and that's food security for my country. And also bees ensure the pollination of many, many wild species and ensure our biodiversity. So this is the lobby that we as beekeepers have to do. Some current efforts, as I said, and you will probably hear more about this in the, in, uh, in, through other presentations. In 2019, Apimondia released its statement on honey fraud that can be found in its more updated version of 2020 in the Apimondia website in different languages, English included. And at this point, the biggest organization of beekeeping in the world fixes its position and says what is honey and what is not, and what are the methods that Allah allowed to produce honey, and what are the methods that cannot be accepted. This is the official word of beekeepers. But then, as I said, the United States Pharmacopeia created an international expert panel to write a honey identity standard for honey with an international scope. I have the privilege to, 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 to chair this panel and I can tell you that we've done a big job in a quite short time. I also heard of other ongoing work to update codex or ISO standards, which are absolutely welcome. I told you already about this, the Pimondia statement of honey fraud. The, the Apimondia working group on, of honey fraud is responsible for the preparation and the update of this standard that is normally updated every one or two years. And experts of the five continents, including Africa, are represented in this panel of experts, of beekeeping experts, that uh, fix Apimondia position every year or every year, two years, as I said. I've been allowed to share a couple of um, slides by the USP, the United States Pharmacopeia, about their recent efforts to publish an identity standard. These, uh, this standard will be published in the Food Chemical Codex. What is the Food Chemical Codex? Well, it was created by the US FDA and the US National, National Institute of Medicine in 1966. It's a nonprofit organization. And more than 1,250 standards have been published there. All the standards of the uh, pharmaceutical industry in the, in, in the United States are published there and also some identity standards of some foods. These standards are developed by expert volunteers. It's all voluntary work. And it's the only independent source of food ingredient standards. The honey identity standard was first proposed in June, 2020. Then a period of three months for public comments was opened, that period finished, and if everything goes accordingly, by the end of the years, the standard will be finally published. It is also important to, to, to note that uh, it is a dynamic standard. At every time, new developments, new discoveries, new knowledge becomes available, the standard will be updated. This expert panel gathers experts from Argentina, Canada, China, Germany, and of course, the United States. Just one slide about testing. This is the more familiar way that we recognize as an important tool to combat honey fraud. The first thing is that, that we have to recognize that honey is a very complex food. Many substances included and also with great variations according to the botanical or geographical origin or sometimes between year 
after year. So we always have to speak about ranges of parameters. Honey is complex and the modes of honey fraud and are every day more sophisticated. So there is no single method that can currently detect all kinds of fraud. There is agreement that uh, the most uh, accepted and most the best available methods currently available are LC-IRMS, NMR, and LC-HRMS. The three methods used in combination gives us the best guarantee of the results. This is expensive. Normally it has to be applied to lots of honey. And sometimes we may find non-conformances that may, may need further investigation through other targeted tests. So testing is complex and normally cannot be addressed by a single country. We always have to depend on domestic testing and testing from abroad. Normally the main laboratories have, uh, are in Europe especially in Germany, and they have the most advanced test for honey. So there are no limp, simple, visual, traditional tests to detect honey fraud. It's, they may have been useful many years ago, but today the issue is so sophisticated that very sophisticated methods need to be applied. My final message is that all beekeepers, we all have a role. I may have a role giving presentations, uh, working on standards, but all beekeepers have a role creating awareness in his family, in his neighborhood, and through local beekeeping associations, collaborating with local authorities, bringing awareness of the problem, explaining what is honey and what is not, why your beekeeping sector is being challenged and what would be the, 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 the consequences if the bees disappear in your country. And with an army of beekeepers, we have a good chance. This is a very complex issue that cannot be in the hands of just a few people. We need an army in the good sense of the term army of beekeepers defending the product. We have to defend our product. It's like the magic formula that we have to, de to defend. And we've been doing this very well for many years. And this is why honey is one of the very, very few products that is currently consumed as it was 200 years ago. And if you check how many foods are now consumed as they were 200 years ago, you will find so few, so few. And this is because the beekeepers have been, have been very good guardians of the product and the most, and the fair modes of honey production. So please awaken, please be proactive and help the global, global beekeeping community to defend our product. The source of these, the data I've used here is, um, was taken from the Argentine Chamber of Exporters that sources the information from the International Trade um, Center that also sources data from United Nations contrade. So this is public information, this is information that can be double checked for you. I also used a chart from a recent publication that we made with Professor Schlossinger from the University of Bayreuth in Germany about honey fraud. It's, this is a whole book dedicated to food fraud and chapter 15 is dedicated to honey fraud. And there we try to describe the most recent advances of, in the combat of honey fraud and the, uh, recent, the most uh, recent knowledge about testing. I just have to repeat my thanks to the organizers and to you 
And I hope this information becomes useful for you and you have a good progress combating honey fraud. Thank you so much. Thank you.